Hello, and sorry for the delay. Uh, I, will, I will need to speed up a bit. So my name is Eduardo. I work uh, on Devo team. I try to deliver stuff. This was a perfect example. So every day I try to deliver something. And nothing is easy or straightforward, even that looks like easy. Uh, also part of the DevOps port to group, user group, and also part of DevOps days that will happen in 2024. So the agenda for today, I will make a small uh, introduction about around deployment pipelines, the, the challenge about uh, regarding database, source control as the first step, migrations versus state, and, and lastly, flyway, comparing flyway with Liquibase. So I like to start every presentation with a, a small definition. This is my favorite one regarding deployment pipeline. As you, you can see in bold, you see collaboration between v various groups involved in delivering software. And of course, this pipeline purpose should, be provide, should provide visibility about the flow of changes. So today we will talk about changes in the database. This is my simplest vision regarding the pipeline stage. One, source control, how we describe the change. The stage two, it's where the moment we validate the change and we think we gain enough confidence to promote that change to a target environment. And step three is to deploy that change on that target environment. So most of this is on the application level, it's, it's the standard, right? But what about the database? Is it uh, straightforward as we think, or it should be? The first the question is, what is special about database that makes different from the application? And the, question, the answer is quite simplest. Basically, it's the data there, right? During the deployment uh, process, before, during, and after, we need to persist data. Otherwise, we get, we get in trouble, right? So that is why everyone, or most of us, are afraid of making change on the database or touching database. So we tend to, or even organizations, have special teams, database administrators, to deal with this, managing these changes. Uh, and this, uh, I identify two cases. In the first one, imagine you have a database team that handles this, and everything is manual. So basically, we need to trust on a database administrator because he knows a lot. So it's the, the, the last guardian of the database. In this case, if we need to know about what changed it, we need to ask someone. Um, if that person is not focused, that they probably it will be uh, missing or making the wrong change. And because this, this is a manual step that prevents to go beyond and try to invest on CI and CD. And of course, since we have a, a, a database administrator, this kind of wizard, everyone else gets fear, have fear from change because no one, it's, it seems we don't understand quite well how that, happen, how that works, so it's, it seems it's better to live with that person. The, the second scenario, more, more evolved, is when you already have some automation involved, you have a pipeline, let's say, uh, but they are independent. So application is done on that side, and database is done on that side. People can drink coffee together, but the process is independent. So that means you need to align. You can do the alignment during the coffee break, or 
you can phone, you need to send an email, and you have to do that. Like, can I deploy version one? No, the database is not ready. I need to first test, deploy, and then you can deploy the new version of the application. So this is a communication challenge because, yeah, we are we can be quite uh, uh, bad on communicating or over communicating, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's common to see the database as a, a bottleneck or a scapegoat, at least when, when the application is, is, is too slow, the, the, you can blame database, or it's not there, so everyone can blame the database, because normally this is a process that is hidden on the, somewhere on the organization. So how we fix this, or try to fix this? The first thing is, let's automate everything that is possible. Um, by automating, at least, for me, the, my favorite part is failing in a controlled and known way. So if you start automate your delivering process for your database, you will start by failing. Next, you will start failing in the, always in the same way, but that means you are evolving, you are improving. And in the end of that journey, you will get a process that will be reliable, and repeatable, and at least will be consistent. So you can have something that you will provide a common language between you and other people that uh, consume data from the, the database. And as a bonus or a, as a, a side effect, you can remove, not remove, but at least reduce the human intervention on, on this process. So, because this talk is focused on comparing two different tools for managing uh, database changes, I will focus on the first, only the first step, on the source control, basically, is how we create our migrations, our, how we describe changes in the database. So, uh, every database change can be described with a SQL script. And of course, I'm, to I'm specific talking about relational database. Um, if we use a SQL script, that means we can tell the full story of the change in the database. So we get traceability. We don't need to send email or call anyone. So was you that change that you re renamed the database or renamed the column? No, you just go to the, to the package or to the, the delivery package and you can check that. So SQL becomes documentation. You can read it. Also, it becomes your code base. And since it's the, the same language shared between database people and application, and, and application people, it, it becomes a common language, so it's easier to understand both parts or every stakeholder involved in this process. So this is just an example, a create table, and um, uh, insert data on that table. Uh, SQL, at least on, on my experience, most everyone can understand, can easily understand the, a, a script, and it will, it will be easy to pre uh, preview the impact of this change on the database. Of course, if the, the change is too big, it will be impossible, but we will get there. Okay, so we are in a moment that we decide that we need to version control your database. So what approach we can select? We have two options. One is called a state-based approach, and the other one is migrations-based approach. The state-based approach, the script represents the state, the desired state of the database. So it should be the source of truth about how the database should be. So if your column, if your table needs, should have three columns, you should show, uh, your picture should be that three columns. The other approach is migrations. The, the, the migration rep represents how that change should happen. Okay, imagine you have a table, have just two columns. 
you want a third column. In that case, we'll, your script will be alter table add column. It will not be a create table with three columns, okay? Because on the state based approach, you will get a, you get a tool or a mechanism that will compare the current state and the desired state and build the delta or the change. Basically, in fact, what happens is the state approach um, involves a tool that creates the migration to reach that state. Um, there's some tool just to, to exemplify the two approaches. And both approaches um, have pros and cons, of course, as anything, everything in life. But um, uh, you can even use the two approaches in different moments. For example, when you are baselining, you just want to start a new instance in somewhere else, you can just take that state and put there. You, normally, you can achieve that by uh, backup, but also can use a state-based approach. Uh, my favorite one goes to migrations, first, because <laughs> the tools are open source, first. And second, it promotes the a conversation between the application, the developer, and the database person. Because uh, on the migrations, I can put the migration together with the code, and we can have a conversation through a pull request, for example. On the state approach, that doesn't happen. It can happen, but uh, it's quite hard to do that, uh, because you will get a tool that will create that migration, that delta, and then it can just inject on the database. It's, I prefer the other way because it uh, involves more learning uh, to, between database and application. And now we go to comparing these two uh, tools, Flyway and uh, Liquibase. So both are tools for for managing database change. This is from uh, documentation. Uh, Flyway w w started as an open source and then Redgate bought it like four years, four years ago. I've been using Flyway since 2013. So I, I have more experience on, on Flyway. Liquibase, I, I think on the... Um, when I started doing research around database change management, I compared both, but I think at that time, I could be wrong, Liquibase didn't support SQL. So only XML, JSON, and now it supports, I will see. So I think my, ch my choice for Flyway was basically, the, it's not fun to describe a change using XML. So, before I, show, I share with you what is the difference between both, I'm starting with uh, what is common. So both have a, one mission, is to make sure that a migration is executed just one time and one time only. That migration is executed in, in, in a specific order, and both use a tracking table or a meta table, or is a table where you track the changes that you apply to the database. So these rules, these uh, three rules are, uh, it's the way these two tools uh, work. So, of course, the first question is licensing. So uh, it is, um, the, the, do I need to spend money to do this? Does, does the community edition supports all the features that I need? Um, so in Flyway case, we have community, teams, enterprise versions. Of course, um, the more you go, the more features you have, the more you have to pay for it. But uh, in this uh, case, this comparison is more focused on community edition, and on Liquibase will be also the open source version. You also find the pro, version and the enterprise version. Of course, in the enterprise level, they never show the price. I don't know why. Okay, 
So you already know if you have an open source version in both. So what kind of database, what database they support? This is the list for Flyway. You can find it there, um, most of your da database that you use. Um, Comparing to Liquibase, it supports, uh, I, I think it's in the website they say 58. So they, they support more databases. And a plus, they also support non-relational database like MongoDB. Okay? I didn't try yet. Okay, so how can we write migrations with Flyway? We can use the SQL or Java, okay? I never tried the Java migrations, okay? I'm not a developer. But SQL, I've been using it a long time ago and uh, using a CLI and more recent, uh, the Docker version. Um, and, and this is an, uh, an example of a, of a migration. On the, on the liquid base side, we have, we, they, it's not called the, the uh, migra it's not used the, the, the term migration. They used the term changelog. That uh, basically is the, is the list of all changes in, in the database. And you can include in that changelog, you can include more changelogs on that, cha on that main changelog. And, uh, you can do this by you, you writing SQL, XML, JSON, and YAML. So you can uh, go wild and make uh, uh, a main change log and lots and lots of change logs, or you can just write a single change log with every change in a single file. The change set is the basic unit of a, a change. Okay, you can have a lot of, you can define every change in the change set. So change set one, two, three, four, and so on. Or at least you can differentiate them using the ID for each um, change set. So you can see that structure. You can have the main change log, other change logs, and inside of each change log, you have a change set or multiple change sets. Uh, this is just an example of the four formats. Uh, SQL, and SQL is achieved by adding that comment. And then we have JSON, XML, and YAML. Okay, next stop is tracking table. Uh, the tracking table is used to track the state of the database. So how it works. So in one hand, we know where a file system, in our folder, we have the migrations, the files. And in the database, we have the change table. What, we, what the tool do is to compare the migrations that I have with the states. And if you see a drift, you will say, oh, this migration was not applied, and you can apply that migrations. Or uh, depending on the order, you can do something about that. And uh, in, by default, in Flyway, the name is Flyway Schema History. And uh, the first time you run, if the database is empty, it will create it. If it's not empty, Flyway will tell you uh, that is, they have already some objects, and it will ask you if you want to baseline that uh, database. Okay, and then as you can see, that in, I, don't see, I don't know if you can see, but that is the columns of that uh, tracking table. So you have the, the version, uh, the description, the type, the, the name of the script, the checksum. You can even use uh, uh, the checksum to validate if meanwhile the database or the script have changed. This is a common validation when to make sure that the, um, the migration didn't change in the process of promotion. Okay. Okay. So in Liquibase, you have the database change log that do the same uh, uh, purpose. So it tracks the state of the database, 
and each row is the chain is a, a chain set. So if you have a change log of three chain sets, they will, you will get three rows. So the versioning will be the file name, uh, so it will be combination of the change log, change set, ID of the change set. And in case for liquid base, you also have, this is just uh, to you to know, that uh, the, all the columns that you have. And you have a second table, the change log, log table. And this is used by, Flyway, uh, by Liquibase to make sure that only one instance of a only one client to connects to the database and applies the change. So if you have two instances, uh, you will see, you will get that it's, it's, uh, it's being used, it's locked, so you will wait until it's finished and that it will unlock and then we'll apply the changes, okay? Okay, so now comments. What you can do with Flyway? The, the open source uh, comments are the migrate, the clean, info, validate, baseline, and repair. Uh, the most comments that I use is migrate to apply the migrations, the info to show the current state, and of course the baseline. Other things like undo or take snapshots, it's paid uh, comments. Liquid base, on the other hand, have more uh, functionalities, that means more commands, and we can have, uh, this is the categories that you have in NEAT for initialization the project, update, rollback, database inspection, change tracking, maintenance, and for example, quality checks and flow are only on the pro edition. So this is the init commands uh, that you can use for starting a project. So what, what will do it to provide you already the, the, the scaffolding of your project, your uh, template of your properties files, where you should put the, the, the migrations, and so on. And then on update section, you have a lot of useful commands. Of course, the update. In the case of Flyway, you'll just do Flyway migrate. In this case, you'll do fly, uh, liquid base update. One, the other also useful is the drop all. Because when you are testing, you want to make sure that you are uh, starting the, your testing with a clean sheet. So drop all, update. You can use update SQL, update count, uh, or this is also an interesting one, is update to tag. Imagine you, have, you can split your migrations or your change logs in versions, and you say, please update until tag one, and it will deploy the version one. You can achieve also with this with Flyway, saying, uh, providing the version, like uh, migrate, and you say the version until it should stop. If you have five, you say three, and then you go until the three, number three uh, version migration. And the validate, I think in, this, in uh, Flyway is the same. Validate, you'll do check some validation. Okay, rollback. Rollback is always the feature that I get more questions about, is how to fix what we just broke. So here, it's, uh, the, it's very similar, as you can see the combinations, it's similar to the, um, to the update category. So this is the rollback. It's have the same um, it's the same logic in terms of it's updating backwards, right? I will come back on rollback. Uh, uh, liquid base have uh, inspection commands. It's, for example, you can create, um, you can do a diff between two, uh, two databases, 
And in this case, liquid base, you can do this on the, with the community open source edition. In Flyway, you need to pay for this feature, but in liquid base, it's, it's included. It works quite well with tables, uh, at least. Store procedures, not so good. Tables and views, I tried it, it, it works. And store procedures, it's not so great. Of course, uh, uh, in fact, none of, the, none of the tools that are paid free, I, uh, I tried it, doesn't give you a, a diff enough um, robust to give you, I can use this with my closed eyes. It's almost impossible to do that. But this is, this is a, a great uh, feature, at least to, you do a diff, at least you get like, I don't have any change there, and at least it's equal, I can move on, for example. Oh, and change tracking commands, it's very, uh, they, they also useful for at least to, for makeup reasons. For example, if um, uh, the scenario that I used this was for baselining, or at least faking, that uh, this database always used liquid base. It was not true, right? So, because you cannot just delete and start over in some projects, you'd need to um, make the transition uh, baselining that uh, uh, that database. So what you can do is, because you want to, we have a scenario where you have a green field database and then a brown field database. The brown field, you already have that object in the database. You don't want to create again. In a green field, you want to achieve that state. So uh, you can use change tracking commands for faking that you apply it and basically mark on time that moment and then from that moment on, it's, it's, it's for real. Maintenance comments, more about this. It's used for the list logs. Um, for if you, for some reason, your client just uh, shut down and didn't gracefully exit. This is especially useful when you are working on Kubernetes clusters. And for some reason, your pod just uh, drops and restarted. So uh, you can even you can uh, you can even find on on the GitHub uh, um, an extension that allows you to uh, in enhance the graceful termination of the client. So imagine you have a. Uh, or you are a using a Kubernetes cluster, you have a, a Postgres database, and you are using Liquibase for some reason that pod restarted. So if you are on a moment that we are updating that the on change lock, they will be at one. So nobody else will be able to change the database. So you can find on web, I will, if you ask me in the end, I will tell you where you can find the extension that fix this, or at least to helps you to manage this. Okay, configuration, how you can pass parameters to the tool. You can uh, use the co command line arguments, in if you are using the, the CLI, you can use an environment variables or the configuration file. Uh, when you, you are using on your local development environment, probably you won't use the configuration file. But if you are on the pipeline, you probably want to use the, the command line parameters, or at least command line combine it with the configuration file. And I know you cannot see, sorry, I will, uh, it's next presentation, I will improve this one. But this is the, should be, <laughs> you have to trust me, this is the, the file that has the, all the parameters for Flyway. You can find the URL, the user, passwords, and so on and so on. Uh, the same thing for liquid base. You can also use the, the three approaches, command line, environment variables, and the configuration file. It, it, it works very in the same way. You can use the URL. Uh, you have to say, where, where is your main change log? And of course, user and password. And again, sorry for this. In, in, it's a print screen, so I cannot just 
enlarge. Uh, the locations, as I said, uh, it's a, you can pass it uh, to as a, a configure as a parameter, and uh, you can by default you can uh, create it on the flyway. If you're using the CLI, you you can put on the SQL folder. But for some reason, imagine you want to split in databases. You add database one, three, and you have to add to the path, let's say like this, where to find that migrations. Of course, again, each parameter can be passed by as a as parameter in the command line. Liquid base, it's different because you just need to say where is your change log. From there, Liquid base will know where are the other change logs. In the worst case scenario, you just, you just have one. In the, if it is not the case, you will point to the other change logs. OK, so ordering. This is one, one of the most important features. Um, it's the order. The order by the, the migration will be applied to the database. And in Flyway, the, the file name is the main driver for this. So Flyway have a convention that defines everything between the uh, caps lock V and the double, uh, double underscore is the version. In this case, it's the version one. And then you have a nice uh, description, and the, f the file needs to be, have the extension of SQL, okay? So as you can see below, that is a set of uh, migrations, and the versioning, I like to use timestamp, because it allows you at least to read in terms to um, give you temporal context. So when was the migration created? At least when we need to debug, it will be very useful. And once again, the, I use this naming convention. This is, uh, was kind of uh, used by me. So I use this like the, time, the version using timestamp and then create this operation. TV is the, the kind of the object and then the name of the object. I use this naming convention for it re it's really useful to look at the scripts and know what is about without opening the scripts. So I can even search by race and I will get the create and insert. So without opening scripts, I can almost tell the story about the changes for that object. On the liquid base, the ordering it is defined by the change log file. Okay? And you can put it like that. Uh, and they will apply it even if I mix it the let's say the versionings like the the flyweight style to trust it and it will apply the way you put it. Okay, the orders. But the a common scenario is when you Instead of using file by file, you use the path for a folder and say, everything that is in folder is a change log. So in that case, it will be uh, the alphanumeric. So again, this naming convention is also useful to provide that ordering, okay? Of course, I can make this complex with folders and subfolders, but then it's a, that moment, it's how it's, the moment you need to draw, design the way you will manage, special because if it involves one team, more than one team, and so on. Um, one cool feature for liquid base is the load data. Most of the, in, 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 I can, I find in some most, it's always in, a, in each database you can find configuration data. Okay, I don't know, for colors, uh, something like a base configuration that will define the behavior of something of some application. On the flyway, you can, the, the best way or the only way, or at least that I found, is the normal inserting tool. But this is a challenge. Imagine that you have a, a, a big f lot of rows. So, in liquid base, you have something that calls load data. 
that uh, allows you to load a CSV file for or a table. This is quite useful, especially when you are bootstrapping um, the application or the, the database. You just need to say, provide the CSV file, and then you can even then define how the data is filled in that table. So that is a, I want to share this cool feature from Liquibase. OK, the undo. So in Flyway, the undo or rollback is done by creating the opposite uh, migration with the same version. The difference is instead of a V from version, it's a U from undo. OK? And then instead of uh, flyway migrate, you do fly, flyway migrate dash undo. And it will undo. You will see this. Then uh, you can do info they will in that uh, uh, table, or the, the way you describe it. Can, it will tell you what uh, migrations can be undone, because they are the ones that have uh, undo script. The bad news is that you have to do the ones to create the undo script. On the liquid base, um, the approach is different. Uh, you have the chain set first, and then you can end, you can add the rollback just after the chain set. Okay, and then you do the rollback, so the mechanism is the same. Uh, I guess in some, I, I, I'm not entirely sure because I didn't test it. Is you have some feature that can provide the, automatically the rollback, but it's very limited. And I didn't find yet a tool that can deal with this unknown complexity that you can print in the, in the script. So my advice for you is don't roll back. Roll forward, OK? It's much easier because in the end, you just want to go, you want to go to the known or desired state. That it will, instead of going back, you just need to go to the next step. It can be that state, OK? It's much, uh, it's, curio the, it's curious enough that uh, in the flyway, I remember that uh, in, in, when it was from the, oh, it's, it's a German guy. The creator of flyway wrote a post why you didn't implement the undo feature and saying, don't do it, roll forward. And when the, they, the one he sold the, the flyway, the f one of the first features to be to implemented was the, the, the undo. So it's quite interesting to, to see that. But OK, in this case, roll forward, please. Both, you can use the Docker version or the CLI version. Both supports, uh, uh, both tools support it. So is, here is the flyway, this liquid base. And my two cents for you, it's my, this is my opinion, OK? Uh, Flyway, it's, it's, uh, it's, a simply, it's more simple. It, it, uh, it's, it provides a more opinionated way to deal with migrations. And the commands are much limited. And it, it highly depends on the file name. I like it. I like it that fact because it's much easier to go uh, to a team and, exp and say to, to them, OK, the version is the file name. You put it here, and you will timestamp. It's easier to share that knowledge that goes in the liquid-based state because it gives you more advanced features. So you have more flexibility. You have more power. Uh, and with more power, with great responsibility comes more, uh, with great power comes with more responsibility. So probably if you, weren't, if you are starting, 
I will say flyway. Or if you already advanced it, you need the features that it's more complex, liquid base will be the answer for you. But again, it's, you are the best ones to make that call. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. If, you, if we are migrating from a database change management like Mongok, let's say. Sorry, uh, like? Mongok. It's used for MongoDB okay. database. And uh, we are thinking on migrating for, to Likibase um, to migrate the whole history of the changes because we are not interested on, on losing that. Um, we will do kind of a mapping between those change management, right? Uh, from Mongo, I, I, I'm not. I try to apply the same approach with from Mongo, uh, but yeah, for Mongo, I, I, have, I have to recognize I'm not an expert I, as Mongo. And among the Mongo cases, normally it's the application that deals with that stuff. Yeah, we we use. Uh, on, on the on the Mongo um, uh, Java code to mm. to apply the changes, okay. and uh, on the Liquid Base we realize that uh, they they don't have that features, so we can we sh we need to to write the um, the script, okay. and we choose it to to go with the YAML files because they are simple to mm -hmm. read and to 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 see what is being done. And uh, one of the questions that came up in the team was what we will do with the, the legacy projects that we have, that uh, we are building them with a, a, a legacy framework and we are migrating them during the year to a new one. So mm -hmm. we have that, uh, okay. that challenge and the question is what will be the, the approach that, uh, that, that okay. you, you advise? Uh, I can I can tell you what I did for a SQL uh, or relation database. It's when you have a database, you have legacy, and you want to start a, uh, a new instance, right? Yeah. But uh, you, what we do is the um, I don't know in Mongo that if you can achieve that is the change logs because you have to. So in the end of you have two databases, right? Let's say. And one is new, and the other is a brownfield. It's already with their objects, right? Mm -hmm. And in the end, you want, uh, in the end of the day, they, you want both with the same state, right? Yes. One comes from zero, and the other is already have the, that own style. What we did for relation is we create the change log for the last state, it represents that state that the two databases should be. And in the green field, in the, in the clean sheet database, we apply every change log. On the other, I've, we use the one of that, that is, we fake it that we apply it, because you don't, the object's already there. And you go to that change logs version, let's say, and from that moment on, you uh, start to use every, uh, every change will go through liquid base. Yeah. I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, it, it was what I, I was thinking when I was sitting here. Yeah, just uh, putting all the new changes on Blickybase and then do a user story to migrate all the history that yeah, the we history. have on the other, on the other migration um, tool that to Blickybase. Yeah. yeah. I did this with uh, I did this command uh, three tools because uh, it was a project when we have three databases, and one was used in Liquibase, other one was used in Flyway, and other was was for .NET, uh, a tool from .NET to manage uh, uh, migrations. Mm -hmm. So what we did, we marked that moment, like we, f and then we, the brownfield database, we fake it, and then from that the baseline, from that baseline on, it's Liquibase that takes over, and every change goes through Liquibase. Okay, thank you. 
Yes, you can fake it. You can, you have, you can uh, just say, oh, I apply it. It doesn't apply, but... Yes. Or you can, in, in, the, in the worst case, you can diff between an empty database and a database that is your current state. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, check always. After all, it's an open source tool. Uh, sorry. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, do we really can, I mean, the, these tools, they can guarantee exactly once execution? Yes. Uh, if we have, uh, uh, for example, in Oracle, if we have DDL commit and then fail, what do they do in this case? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear the question. I mean, uh, in Oracle, for, for example, they commit, if I remember it correctly, they commit on DDL operation. And if they fail after, after commit, how do they? So they what you say commit? is, what happens when a migration fails? Migration fails in the middle when it's already committed. The, if the migration fails, the migration is rolled back by the tool. Because if a liquid base and flyway encapsulates the change in the, in the transaction, so so if it, it fails, it goes back to the state that it was the last uh, successfully applied migration. So imagine you have a create and then insert. If, it, uh, if create and then insert fails for some reason, you, you keep the create. No, create and insert is simple. I mean, if there are several other tables and uh, all of the uh, uh, When it fails the first, it stops there. Uh -huh. oh. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, hello. You mentioned that um, Liquivase had some sort of mechanism to lock the database so that it would prevent multiple instances to access it concurrently. Mm -hmm. You didn't say anything related to Flyway. Is there a similar mechanism in Flyway no. or just the pro version? Just maybe? the transaction. Okay. It's. Uh, it's on the liquid base is session level, on the flyway is object level. So when you are changing an object, it locks as using a transaction, locks, and then uh, it makes supply. That doesn't prevent of multiple, there, there is no the, the same level of lock mechanism. It's more, more friendly in liquid base, I guess. Thanks.